Hayden just got the chance to see high energy work this morning. Looked to be pretty good work out there. Yeah, she was, Greg. Yeah, she just worked over 2,000 metres and um, ran the last half just a bit, bit better than 62 seconds. So um, the track was a little bit off, so it was, it was a really good run. When you have a filly of her quality come into the barn and she's out of a Group 1 performer and high gate herself, I suppose there's an expectation, but I suppose there's also the other part to it is she's just another horse. Yeah, that's their right. Yeah, they're, they're not good horses until they prove themselves. And, um, you know, she, she hasn't let us down yet. So, um, yeah, hopefully she can um, go nice race again on Friday. What type of horse is she? Because going on her first up run, which was about as good as they go first up as a two-year-old Frotter, um, were, were the expectations of the stables that, that she would deliver that type of performance? Uh, look, we knew she'd go, go a good race, but um, you know, just she, just older, a bit of steering gear around. She's just hanging in a bit, going up behind the gate there, and Johnny couldn't quite get her on the gate there. So, um, sort of, she just missed the start completely, pretty much. So, um, yeah, like I said, we knew she was going to go, go a good race, but uh, probably didn't probably think she was going to go that good. Were you thinking at the half mile what probably the punters were as well that had backed her into short odds? Gee, she's going to have to be good from here. Yeah, look, I sort of watched it there live there and thought, oh no, she's no hope. But um, you know, she'd run nice fourth or fifth. It would have been a good effort, but um, you know, to pick herself up and um, you know win the race also. Going into Friday night, it's basically a month between runs, but she has had a run at the trials. She did finish on paper fourth of four, but she looked to be doing it quite nicely. She did, yeah. Johnny just looked after her, yeah. We sort of we planned on running running her at Addington last Friday there, but unfortunately the race didn't get off the ground, so um, second best was a quiet trial for her, and um, you know, they trialled up over a mile and a half also, so you know, last half in 60 seconds, so um, uh, Johnny just looked after her, and um, you know, she's come through the run really well. Is that part of the frustration at the moment, horses like her needing races? Because it's not ideal going into a group race when you're having that big a distance between runs. Yeah, no, it's not ideal at all, but um, it's sort of all round, you know, the, the pacing Colts and fillies, they're exactly the same boat at the moment, um, just struggling to get numbers and it's, um, yeah, it's, 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 a, it's hard, hard to, you know, overcome that. In the last four or five years, two-year-old trotters haven't been a big part of the Rolleston base that you're obviously the co-trainer of now. Is that not by design, it's just that you haven't had that sort of stock that you need to be able to compete, particularly in the group races? Yeah, probably just haven't had the stock, really. Um, to be honest with you, we, we didn't have a single horse. Um, it was actually a funny story, I was talking to Ken Brickham one day there, and um, I said, Ken, have you got any trotters? We've got no trotters. So, um, you know, she's the only trotter we've got. So. Um, um, yeah, it was, it was, we're pretty lucky really. Completely different, isn't it, training the trotters? Do you enjoy that side of it? And, and obviously you're gleaning so much uh, information off Mark and Natalie, I, I guess, but um, it, it does provide another challenge? Oh, it definitely does, yeah. They always keep you scratching your head, that's for sure. Um, yeah, it's, all, it's always good to sit behind a nice trotter when you've got one, but, um, you know, there's, there's a lot of work involved. Um, you know, they've got to be dead perfect. Um, you know, yeah, Mark, Mark's a very good man with the trotters. Um, he, he knows what he's doing, and, um, it's, yeah, like I said, it's great to learn off him. And obviously the shoeing side of things is, is an enormous part, and you've got one of the best in Kerry Estridge uh, doing the business there. Yeah, that's right, yeah. Kerry does a super job. Yeah, he's very committed to the stable, and, um, you know, he always, always goes out of his way to um, do the best for the horses. What about going into Friday night, off the work today, and she'll have another run on Wednesday, I'd imagine. Um, are you happy with uh, where she's at? Yeah, really happy, Greg, yeah. Like, like we said, it's a few, few days between races, and um, you know, uh, every run she's had at home, um, she's got better and better, so um, I think going into Friday night, she shouldn't be too far off her best. Hayden, the stable have an incredible record in the welcome stakes. You're going to have a handful of runners go there on Friday night, but one guy standing out at the moment and don't stop dreaming's the man. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, he's just he's been super so far. Um, he's, he only does what he has to. He's lovely wee bit as cult, and um, you know I'm, I'm sure he'll carry on. Look, his two performances at Group Race level, um, he's been taught a wee bit in the runs as well by Olivia by virtue of one he had to take a trail first up but he worked early uh, and, 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 and the big one down south at Invercargill and, and, and then really dashed up the lane he, he, he's just got that good horse's look about him. Yeah he does yeah you, you know and he, I think he's got a good enough well he showed at last start he's good enough to make his own luck as well in, in the running so um, yeah, he's, yeah there's a look to like about him. You've got some others in there. Uh, OK Boom has been fine in both of those same races that don't stop dreaming uh, one. And, and Vinca B was a first up uh, when it had to sit parked uh, in, that, in that race uh, down there, the Classic. And uh, gee, it, it, he showed enough to suggest that he can steadily take some ground off Don't Stop Dreaming. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, and he's first up, first trip away. So, um, yeah, we're really wrapped with his run. Um, 
he, he has improved off the run too. He, he's come home, you wouldn't even know he's had a trip away. So, um, yeah, no, we're really happy with him. Hayden, the couple of others that lined up at Addington the other night, very impressive was final collect, and with style was solid in fourth. Uh, these two look progressive types. They're going to get their chance at the group race level on Friday night as well? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, they're nice runs by the pair of them, to be honest. Um, first, first start, racing the old horses as well, so um, sort of got to take that into consideration. Um, with style, he hit the line really well, and um, the other guy, he just looks like he can save it as well. What's the makeup of the two-year-olds? How, how does it work when you get them from the sales? Uh, they often get broken in off the place. So who does that? And when they arrive here, is it the second and third preparations they start sort of shaking down and, and finding their place? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, um, they normally go to Stephen Boyd or Timmy Trathan. He does it here for us as well. Um, he does a really good job as well. But um, majority go to Stephen Boyd and um, yeah, he breaks them in. And normally they'll go out for a wee break and. Uh, Generally, they will go back to Stephen for a couple of weeks until he's happy with them. Then they'll generally come here, and um, you know we'll just slowly start working them down. All right, with a horse like Don't Stop Dreaming, the first time you had a chance to have a steer behind him, or Mark did, mm. was it instant? I think so. Yeah, Mark really liked him. He's just one of those typical betters, really. You know, the more you ask him, he just keeps giving that little bit more for you, and um, yeah, he's sort of liked him from day one, really. The change in, in uh, date, birth date for the horses has to change your mindset and, and also the shape of, of when you need to have these horses ready. It's still taking a little bit of working out though, isn't it? Yeah, that's right, yeah. Um, like we're going to the Welcome Stakes next week here and um, you know, a couple of them don't stop dreaming and OK Boomer, they'll, they'll more than likely go out for a wee break and um, you know, prepare for the spring and summer for the bigger races then. Um, otherwise, you sort of find yourself getting caught short and you only end up with two or three weeks off. So. Um, yeah, there's a lot to think about when, when planning their races. Hayden, when it comes to this stable, often people think, oh yeah, they have great horses, um, you know, racing at free-for-all level, racing in the cups and that sort of thing, but it excites you every year when the juveniles come through, doesn't it? Oh, it does, yeah, that's right, and um, I think we've got a pretty good crop this year, you know, so, um, and we've also got a good crop of three-year-olds as well, so um, I think it's pretty exciting, you know, with the months to come.